let's take a look at Letter Jam, a cooperative word-based party game. Before we do, I want to thank CGE for providing us with a review copy of this game. Yeah, thanks, Chuck Games. Uh, Letter Jam was designed by Andra Scoopy and published by Czech Games Editions in 2019. Uh, this party game plays from two to six players, with each game taking, uh, this is rough, um, a half an hour to an hour, depending on how much deliberation time the players use, uh, trying to come up with clues or trying to figure out the clues they have and possibly getting confused and having to look back at previous rounds. This, this one's rough to fit in a distinct time box. Now, this is a cooperative word game where players are trying to figure out the letters they have in front of them while providing single word clues to the other players that will help them guess the letters they have in front of themselves. Now, after multiple rounds of clue giving, if all the players not only figure out what letters they have in front of them, but are able to spell a word with that, then the entire group wins. Now, if players run out of clues before everyone's able to do this, the group as a whole loses. One thing that really impressed both of us with this game is the component quality, mm -hmm. which you can see for yourself in our Letter Jam unboxing video on YouTube. Yeah, I was impressed by every aspect of everything that came in this box. Uh, the quality of the letter cards that have some of that UV coating to make the letters, excuse me, the quality of the letter cards that have that UV coating that make the letters stick out, the, the clarity of the rule book. Um, even the fact the game came with a full set of pencils for each player and a sharpener for them. So you could literally play it with out of the box, out of the box without needing anything from outside the box. Though by far the most impressive thing in this game are these poker chip like counters. Like I'm, I'm talking like real weighted poker chips and all they're used for is to identify letters from one to eight. Like that's it. That these are like the ones that came in the original printing of Splendor, if you were lucky enough to get that, or if you paid for the upgrade that came out later. Like, I don't get it in a way. Like, the production quality here is way above what you'd expect from, like, a card-based party game. Yeah, so what are we doing with these great components? All right, so Letter Jam is quite a bit more involved than most, if not all, other party games. Um, it has pretty unique gameplay elements that I gotta admit aren't that easy to explain without just reading you the 16 page or whatever rule book. But I'm gonna try my best to summarize this here. So a game of Letter Jam starts with each player taking part of the deck of letters and picking five that form a word. They Once they got their five, they shuffle them and pass those letters to the player on their left. Now that player can't look at these, right? They just put them down face front and face down in front of them, not knowing any of them. Then they take the first one and without looking at it, flip it up and put it in a plastic stand so that everyone else can see it, but they can't. So each player has a set of five cards chosen by someone else that they mm -hmm. can't look at and can only show anyone else one at a time. That's correct. Now, if you're playing with less than six players, you are also going to set up a number of what they call non-player stands. This is so that the total count of players, virtual and real, in the game is always six. Now, each of these non-player area gets a small stack of cards that's based on the number of players, and you're going to flip up the first one face up into a stand and play so everyone can see it. Uh, you're also going to place a green chit, little green token with it, which I'll get to in a minute what those are for. Now, in the end, when you're set up and ready to play, everyone should have a hidden card in front of them and see five other cards. No matter how many players you're playing with, whether it's two players or you're playing six, you always have one in front of you you can't see and five others you can. Now, there is one wild card in the game that's placed face up in the center of the table, and then the rest of the letter cards are made into a deck in the center of the table as well. And then you put out this flower card that you put these tokens on red and green tokens now the size of the flower and how many tokens based on the number of players each player is going to take a worksheet they then fold it in half so that when you stand it up on the table the other players can't see what you're doing with it now this worksheet kind of gives you a place to mark down notes and write down the clues you're going to get during the round and also importantly has a list of what letters are in the deck because what they've done in the design of this game, which I think is brilliant, is they didn't include the less often used letters. So there's no J, Q, or Z. I don't remember the exact full list. But you won't find those in the deck at all. And if during the game you want to use a word that has those letters, well, that's what that wild card's for. So it's J, Q, V, X, and Z, which are unavailable. Yep. 
And now, this is an important aspect to remember at first, but also easy to forget about mm -hmm. later in the game as you're struggling to think up words or, or what your letters might be and what words might have been combined. It's really easy to accidentally think about a J in your word. <laughs> and I speak from experience. <laughs> So now everyone's set up, right? Everyone can see five letters. They got a hidden one in front of them. The decks are out, the wild cards out. So now what you're going to do is you're going to deliberate. Everyone's going to sit here and talk and decide who's going to give the first clue. Now, this clue is going to be a word that can be spelled with all the letters you can see. Now, there are a bunch of communication rules that come into play here that really restrict what you're allowed to talk about. You can state how long the word you've chosen is. So you can be like, I have a clue for a six-letter word. And then Sean might be like, well, I have a clue for three letter words. Then he can say how many players will help, but not which one. So if we're playing in a three player game, I can say, I got a six letter word that helps both of you. Or I could say, I have a six letter word that helps one of you, but I can't say, well, it'll help D or it'll help Sean. I have to just keep it vague. You can then say, I'm also going to use so many non-player stands. So in a three player game, there's three non-player stands. I would be like, well, I'm going to help out one of you, but I'm going to use all the non-player stands. And then whether or not you're using the wild card. Yeah, I have a six letter word. It's going to help one of you out. It's going to use three wild card, three non players, but I had to use the wild card. Now you're also not allowed to give any ind indication of how good your clue is. So you can't say, like, well, I've got an obscure one that's this, because that actually gives players a bit of information. Or I've got a popular three letter word. You can't do that. All you can give is letters who it can help. Sorry, not who. How many people it can help and how many letter stands and the wild card yes or no and this is more of a struggle than something simple like just no table talk yeah. at all since you are allowed to talk but with these strict rules that become difficult to stay true to yeah. specifically when you're trying to figure out whose clue to choose how do you know which is who, whose clue you want to choose with this limited information it's so easy to just suggest that yours is better by some reason and that's yeah. not allowed yeah i'll admit we were bad for oh i got a good one that was just so easy to say yeah or i really can't come up with that you're really not supposed to do that and there's a good reason for this like it, it really does improve the game by not cheating and now while coming up with a word what i think is really important is it can be any length you could come up i guess you could do a one letter word um which would mean it's only a couple possible letters but it is a couple possible letters, but you can use a two letter word or you can also use like, you can only see five letters, right? And the wild card, but you can use each letter more than once. So you could come up with a seven, eight, I don't know, 11 letter word if you can do it. But interestingly too, it's also possible for multiple players or the non-player stands. When I say players, I mean either person or stands here to have the same letter. And then the clue giver has got to decide does he just tag the one person? Like if two people have a T, does he, and he needs two T's, does he put a chip on both T's or does he put two chips on the one T, right? Now you just deliberate as a group going, all right, I got a five word clue. I got a three, I got a two word clue. Like, you know what, Sean, let's go with your five clue because, you know, Deanna really needs some help. And you're, you're I think you're help. You said you're helping both of us. So I know she's going to need help. So then the player is going to give their clue. And the way they do this is not by talking. You don't say your word because, well, that would give away the letter in front of everyone. You then use those poker chips that we talked about earlier that are numbered one through eight. And you're going to put them out going the first letter in the word is this. And you put your token in front of the stand with that letter. And the second word letter is this, the fourth, third letter, and so on. You put all these chips out. Now, note, you can also use the wild card. So you just put a chip on the wild card, but it can be one letter only. So you can't like put two chips on the wild card, meaning two different letters. But you could put two chips on the wild card if you needed two J's, for example, because everyone knows there's no J card, or at least hopefully they've remembered. <laughs> now, the other thing too is you can go bigger than eight. And the game just suggests do whatever to remember what's higher than eight, which is fine. And while you're doing this, the players who have clue tokens on their letter who are involved, right? The, the Their letter in front of them is in the word are going to start noting this down on the worksheet where it's got a spot to write the first letter, second letter, third letter, fourth letter, fifth letter. And you're going to put like star for the wild card. And you're going to put like question mark for you because you don't know what your letter is. Then you're going to have this, this deduction period where you're going to look and try to figure out what your letter is. Now they don't say it. They don't go, oh, my letter's an R. No, they just decide. And if they're certain they have a letter. They know it's an R. They're going to take their card and put it face down. 
and say, I know what this is. And then they're going to take their next card and put it face up. Yeah, no. And it's the, the problems that emerge are real. Uh, for instance, two players turning up a T at the same time is really hard to deal with unless you yeah. just give up on trying to give one of those players a clue until the other one changes theirs. Uh, especially something like a double T is mm -hmm. really difficult to try and give someone the idea that, yeah, you're, you've given two different letters, but it's the same letter. It's, it's, yeah. it's mind bending. <laughs> Double vow vowels too. I also found very hard to do with. Now, every time you do give a clue, you have to take a token from the flower on the table. When you give out your first clue, you have to take a red token. Um, the green tokens can't be taken until all the red ones are gone. And red tokens have to be evenly distributed among the players. So what this does is all it does is make sure that the same person doesn't give out clue the clues every time. So it's a way to make sure that everyone's involved and everyone gets to play. Uh, though you'd have to anyway, because if someone never gives out a clue, they're, well, I guess, no, you wouldn't ever have to give out a clue to guess your word. So it is a way to, to force every player to give out, depending on the number of players, at least one or two clues. I, I think it's cool. Now, at any point, you use up the last token. At this point, you're into the green ones. You lose the game as a group. You just, you, you ran out of clues. You ran out of time. Yeah, so the flower token thing is weird. Um, honestly, I don't really get it. It works, but yeah. it's just unnecessary. It was something you could just ignore. I mean, if if the manual just said put X green tokens and Y red tokens out and take them out this way, it would be way fine, simpler and you wouldn't have to have this extra component of these cards with yeah. silly graphics on them. And they're, not, they're, they're fine graphics. There's nothing ugly about them. They just unnecessary yeah well no this game has like four artist credits on it so like maybe that flower is drawn by a famous czech artist or something i don't know i i don't know why it's a flower it's a flower reds the petals greens the the leaves and the stems whatever so once your round's done right everyone's either went yeah i know what my letter is or they left the face up going eh, sorry i'm still not sure uh you gotta do some cleanup so someone's gonna pick up all the clue tokens and importantly all the non-player cards that were used are discarded and replaced by new cards from that non-player deck. And if you deplete a non-player deck, you get that green token. Remember earlier I said you put a green token with every stack? Well, you gain that, which gives your group as a whole more clues by the end of the game. Um, and then if you have depleted a deck, you're then going to draw cards from the main deck for that non-player character for each round. You don't get any bonus for getting rid of them. Though. Now, if at any point a player has guessed all their letters, they start each round by drawing a random card that they don't get to see, and they just place it face up in a stand. Now, during the round, the player, if the player is involved and they get to guess what the letter is and they get it right, this time they do say it out loud. They're going to say it and look. They get to place it face up in the center of the table next to the wild card. Now, going forward for the rest of the game, everyone else could use, well, and them can use that letter as part of their clue. But if it is used, you do have to discard it at the end of the round it's used. Yeah, I, I'm not... <sighs> I feel like that's almost a punishment for finishing early. Mm. Uh, again, I haven't played this as, as many times as you have, but I, I feel like I'd be tempted to not reveal that I knew my last clue too early uh, if others were struggling simply because it would just be adding more randomness in there, whereas they'd have a, a fixed clue they could work off of uh, otherwise. So I don't know. It, it's meant to be a reward. Like, as by design, according to the rule book, it's supposed to be a reward, not a punishment. And by guessing bonus letters, you have more letters out on the table to choose from when making clues, which should give you more options and make the game easier going forward. And then there's the weird thing that we're going to get to later with the scoring, which I'm not even going to explain in detail later, but there is a scoring system. And you can use these bonus letters at the end of the game to make longer words. And I honestly think that's the only way to get to the higher scoring tiers. Mm -hmm is to use bonus letters. So there is that aspect. So even if it does kind of muddy it up during the middle of the game, maybe you just ignore them until the last round and then try to make the biggest words you can. Right. Now, Letter Jam continues until either you run out of clue tokens and you lose, or all the players have guessed all their five letters in front of them. Now, again, guessed is on their, their sheet, right? Not You haven't said it out loud. If everyone's guessed, they're now going to use the worksheet to take those five letters and form a word. And then you're going to rearrange the cards in front of you to be that word. 
And then you get the big dramatic moment with the, the drum roll and you reveal one by one your cards and see if you formed a word. And if everyone has formed a valid five letter word in front of them, they all win. Now, I did mention a scoring system. There is one included. Uh, we didn't pay much attention to this. Um, using this, you can make larger than five letter words uh, at the end. You can even use the wild card to make a six letter word, and they're worth one extra point. And then, like, your base word score is like five times the length of the word you spelled. So it's going to be whatever, 25 points by default, or it's three times for 15 points. I, I honestly don't remember because to me, the fun of the game was playing it. I didn't really care what our score was at the end. But there are rules for it. Uh, there is scoring. I guess you can post online how good your group did and compare it to other groups. I don't know. It's a co-op game. Why do you give me a score? I don't quite get it. But hey, some people like to rank themselves. You can do that. Now, this is the rules that I just covered is for the, the, the normal difficulty. Uh, there are rules to make things easier. Like you can play with less than five cards going down to as low as three or more than five going as high as seven. And what they strongly recommend is if you want to play this game with kids, you give the kids less letters than the parents, so they have less to guess. So I thought that was a, a, a cool way to balance the game. Same with like the first time you play. I would recommend the play maybe only doing four letters, just because uh, five takes a while. Like, uh, as I said, the, the game length, at least with us, we, we spend a lot of time deliberating. Yep. The scoring was interesting. <laughs> uh, note that you aren't required to guess the word that was given to you way back yep. at the start. And it is quite possible that if they didn't make notes, the person who gave you that word has no idea at this point what word they gave you. Yep. You just have to get a word. Yes. I got a, I got points because I managed to accidentally put together a five-letter French word out mm -hmm. of my... I had no idea what letters I have, but when I flipped it over, it was a five-letter French word correctly spelled. Yes. I think it was two of yours. You didn't know what two of yours were. You yeah. were wrong on two of them, yeah. but it worked out. And honestly, the way the game scores, they call it more or less winning. And But they call it that when you get a proper word. Sean, more or less won, as, as, <laughs> according to the rules of the game. Whereas myself, I had a letter I didn't know what it was, so I used the wild card to make sure I spelled the word. Right. And it ended up, I guessed it right, but just in case, I, I was covered. I don't know. It, it, the, again, it's a co-op game. Like You win yep. or lose. Yep. I don't quite get the bragging rights, but I'm sure some people appreciate it. If it didn't have scoring, there'd be people screaming that where's the scoring system. Yep. So like most party games, toss it out. It's it's what is it all about the fun? The points don't matter, whatever that the who's yep. lined it anyways quote is. All right, we're gonna jump in the time machine. We're gonna go back to 2019. I remember hearing a ton of hype when this game first released. Like quite a few of the podcasters and and shows I watched were smitten with this game. And personally, eh, I, I as many of you know, I'm not a big party game fans. Like, yeah, yeah there's a few I enjoy. Like I, I did Concept and I have Medium being one of the more recent ones, and I love, but wait, there's more. But like a and uh, I don't know. And plus word games, I am not a big <laughs> word game fan. I I I play against certain people who are really good at word games and it's just not fun to watch their scores rank up where I spell nothing or playing uh, Scrabble versus my dad who has memorized all the two letter words that are somehow legal in this game, whatever. Due to all that, I, I admit, I didn't give it a shot. Like I, whatever, letter jam, people seem to be enjoying it. Now I was talking to Czech Games Edition about potentially re reviewing one of their other games which sadly they did not let me check out, but they did offer to send me letter jam and trap words. And I figured, eh, you know what? People have given this a lot of buzz. I'll check it out. And I got to say, I'm glad I did. Um, as the other reviewers before me have said, this is a really solid cooperative party game experience. There are a number of things that I think make this game stand out from other party games and also from other word games, which is what made me enjoy it. Now, first off, as already mentioned a couple times, is that component quality. Like, this is a card-driven party game that could have just been a deck of letters and standees in a box and, and a set of rules, and that's it. And then I don't know what you use to number them, right? It could have been cardboard chits. Um, it could have just been a pad of worksheets. Like, it, it didn't need all this. Instead, you've got these super high-quality cards that are, I admit, are an odd size, so sleeping them may not be the easiest thing to do, but they're really solidly made. So they got a UV coating on them. You've got stands that don't damage the cards in any way. Like, they're well-designed, so the cards easily slip in and out, but don't slip 
out when you don't want them to. There's cardboard, like, like there's, instead of cardboard counters, you've got these poker chips. Like, these are some of the best chips I have felt in a board game. Like, they have significant weight. I, I am just really impressed by this. It's a party game. What's all this nice stuff? Honestly, the poker chips are both welcome and bizarre. There is no reason whatsoever for such a fantastic quality component in this game. Yet there it is. Yeah, I don't know. Now, the next thing that sticks out to me is just the brilliance of the gameplay here. Like, this game reminds me the most of Hanabi. Uh, this is a another game where you're holding a hand of cards and you can't see your own hand. Everyone else can. So it's got that aspect. And Hanabi does it well. And Letter Jam just does a fantastic job of players having information that only the other players can see right like you don't know the letters in front of you but everyone else does and it just does that so well now in letter jam it's only one card so which i'm glad because i can't see trying to manage all five of your letters at once and like if they were all face up no thank you i i think this is perfect like like just trying to figure out one letter at a time is is great for this game they 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 didn't over hanabi it right they didn't just go here's your hand hold up your hand at cards and they, yep. they managed to simplify it in ways that made it manageable yep now as someone who plays hanabi all the time on board game arena i agree it's a really fun aspect though it is worth mentioning that depending on your player count and the physical size of your table you might mm. need to think a little bit about the layout and setup to ensure that people aren't able to accidentally cheat yeah uh, don't forget, especially that glasses reflect. And yeah. this is the sort of thing that's always a problem with hidden information games like this. Uh, pretty much the only one that doesn't is the card on a headband because it's actually essentially behind mm. your vi- your your uh, your view. So I guess it's it's not as bad with this unless your glasses are really reflective because it would have to be reflecting the other player's stuff, right. not what's in front of you. So it's I, to me that's mitigated quite a bit by this. Now, my favorite part, though, of Letter Jam is all about that whole clue system, um, the way you give clues and the restrictions of what you can and cannot talk about. And I love that the best clue is often is not the biggest word, right? This is not a game about knowing eight word letter long words and seven letter long words like a good clue leaves the guessing player with absolutely no doubt whatsoever what letter they have in front of them when this system does reward players with a big vocabulary it doesn't have to be big meaty words just lots of little words is good just uh, like having a big vocabulary is good but not having to have no obscure words and two letter words like in other word games now, in addition to this, the rules for what words you can and cannot use are the loosest I have ever seen in a word game, and I love this. They the, the words are basically anything your group thinks is a word is a word. This can be a proper name, it can be an abbreviation, it can be the name of your favorite anime character. The words don't even have to be in English or whatever your native language is. Like the last time we played, Sean noted he made a valid French word with his letters, and that worked. Yeah, I think this game would rock as a digital implementation, especially since you don't have to worry about the setup or potentially revealing information that Mm -hmm. way. Uh, The only question is, how do you deal with words? Because if you implement some sort of dictionary, you lose a little bit of the flexibility Mm -hmm. of the game being able to do whatever, as long as everyone thinks it's a word. The only thing I can see is you would need, need to have voice chat. Like, I would not want to have the clue conversation in a text chat. I Actually, I, I was thinking uh, even simpler. So it would be, uh, you know, I, I know, you know, how many letters is your word? Five. How many people does it help? Two. Oh, okay. Right? Re- re- keep it Yeah, that would definitely text. remove the, yeah, yeah, it helps two of you. you know, exactly. That, that, so, that so you, you make it all help. on the digital interface. Yeah. And, you know, if people want to chat about what happened last night on voice, great. But the True. game itself is just the information you're allowed to, to use. So all I would do there is I wouldn't add in any dictionary. I would just let it say, like, when it ends, is this a valid word? Yes, no. Yeah. And let the group do it. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah you that sounds even, great. You even have the, the, the group vote. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? We might have to Google it. I wonder if anyone has put out a digital version of Letter Jam yet. Could be. We have to take a look for that. So, Letter Jam 
one of the things that may not be evident from this, but I, I don't know, I think it is, it sounds complex enough, is this is a lot thinkier than other party games. Like, I kind of hate the term a gamer's game, but you know what? That's kind of what you have here, right? Because it takes a good amount of thought to come up with good clues, especially a clue that's going to help more than one player and make it so it's completely unambiguous to both players. And then you also want to use up those non-player letters. So if you can come up with a clue that helps the entire table and uses up all the non-player letters, that is a great clue. That's the one we're probably going to go with. And then there's even some interesting long-term strategy that I didn't actually see until about our third play, where you know you can't give a player the right answer this round, but you know if you give another clue, you can probably narrow it down. Like, I know I can get it so Sean knows this is one of two. Now all I have to do is give him another clue to make sure he knows which of those two it is. And I think that's really cool. And then along with the deduction with this is the deduction aspect, right? The the trying to figure out what your personal letters are. And like, this goes above just using the current clue. Like, yes, the current clue might give you in your first letter, that's all you're, you have. But then you're going to look at past clues as well as knowing the certain letters on the cards aren't on the cards, which hopefully you remember. And then the fact that you know and this is what, what really dawned on us in that third gameplay was, wait a minute, my five letters have to be able to spell a word. And I'm trying to figure out what my last letter is, and I have no clue, but it's definitely not this because that with those letters doesn't spell a word. And like, that's all meta, right? Like that's not part of the clues that were given by the other players. It's like a, this really interesting way you have to think about words and letters. Yeah. A, a couple drinks in, and I think this game would be far beyond my reach. It's not a late night while you're tired game, really. No, like, like <laughs> I, actually, to be honest, I'm I, I'm almost wondering if we should stop calling it a party game. Like, it doesn't have that. Ha, ha. Well, it does actually. No, yeah. we laughed. We yeah, had the no, fun of, but especially just, at the end, going thinking. back. What was your third clue? Yeah, like, yeah. that was definitely. You, you have to be clear thinking. Yes, uh, and also I would recommend that uh, anyone who's playing, if you are playing the game, write down. Even if you're giving the yes. clue, write that down too. Putting yep. all the information on your sheet helps everyone figure things out later that you don't necessarily know you're going to need to want to do, but you yep. will. So no, at the end, down. you're going to, you're going to, there's going to be someone you're like, what the heck was your third clue? Because yep. I had, um, oh, I was trying to remember one I had. I remember, I remember it was Cupid was what you had decided the word yeah. was. And I can't w remember what I put Fitbit. it was. Fit, it was fit. It was fit. No, that was the one I gave oh, you was, was Fitbit. Did, yeah. I gave Sean Fitbit to finally figure out that he had guessed something wrong on his first letter, but he'd never figured out what the first letter was. Right. Yeah. That was the last time we played. All right. Finally, uh, one other thing that impressed me about letter jam, but we're, we're just like, we're, we're gushing here. Um, I was surprised how well this works with two. Like, like most party games don't work with two at all. This one worked rather well. Now, I'll admit, it feels very different with two players, especially because it's always you're giving a clue to the other player. There's none of that guesswork. And it felt more thick, like more like coming up with clues was a little harder, but it worked. Um, and it's that fact that doesn't matter how many physical players you have, you always have six letters up. You always have five you can see and one you can't. And so it didn't matter. Now, I will admit, I did prefer the game with more, but I liked having the option for Deanna and I to break this out for a couple's night. Yeah, I, I do think, unlike many party games, this one would be hard to play with teams, though. Yeah, uh, many, many party games do easily adapt to, you know, one player becoming a team, but, mm -hmm. uh, but this one, not so much. Maybe for giving out clues, but the deduction part would be, yeah. you, well, you can't table talk, right? Like, you couldn't talk to your partner because it would give stuff away. Yeah. All right, overall, uh, as you can tell, I was impressed. Uh, the Letter Jam from Check Games Edition. This is an extremely solid, impressive, cooperative, word-based party game. Features excellent components and surprisingly deep and engaging gameplay. I greatly enjoy the fact that this game rewards players for choosing clever clues over the biggest, longest, most complex word possible that uses the weirdest letters. I love that. This is a very neat and surprisingly thinky group puzzle that is a ton of fun to play, whether you more or less win or more or less lose. Yep. When you have time, be sure to check out our, uh, I completely agree. 
<laughs> Sean's jumping ahead. We're all good. Uh, if you're a fan of word games, like just pick this up. Like it is a, a, a no brainer to me. Like you need to pick up Letter Jam. Like this is a different twist on letter games. Now I will admit this is a bit on the complicated side. This may scare away non gamers, but I do think it would be a great game to play with fans of different games like Scrabble or Boggle, the lighter mass market ones. Though I would recommend an experienced hobby gamer be the one to teach and introduce the game so they can kind of get the concepts out there. Because this is going to scare someone. If someone someone who's used to Boggle grabs the rule book for this, they're going to be like, whoa, what is this, right? So the other thing I would say is if you're looking for a heavier than usual party game, like if you're like, oh, party games are too flippant. I want something with a bit of meat. I think this is going to be a good choice. I also think this is going to be a good choice for players who like word games but hate losing to players with better vocabularies who have memorized official word lists and have played thousands of rounds of Boggle and Strag. This is my why I like this game. That's why I think you'll enjoy this because it's not about figuring out those big words that use Qs and Zs or those special little words that, that only work in this game. Now, if you hate word games of all forms and shapes, you can probably pass on this, but I honestly would suggest trying a demo at some point. Because this might win you over because it's that different from other word games. Yeah. When you have time, also be sure to check out our written review of Letter Jam over at tabletopbellhop.com. 